All right, I'm going to go over our uh, website information. We have uh, historical design standards posted on there, as well as the current booklet and a link to our uh, mobile web page. Here is our standard uh, website. I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with this. Uh, at the top there is our current uh, design standards booklet. And below here is all of our historical design standards, all of which are, uh, you can download the PDFs, they're word searchable, as well as you can download individual indexes, you don't have to download the entire book. Here is the 2012-2013 Design Standards Booklet. Click that link. You can download the entire booklet. Here's the Design Standards Revisions link. Here are our uh, historical Design Standards Booklets. The S is the booklet itself. The I hyperlinks is the design interim standards. And the last column, design standard modifications, that has that is sorted by the date. Um, and that is the effective date. At the top is our current design standards booklet. Again, here's the design the link to the design standards booklet itself. The next is the design standards revision, the DSRs. And the last one is the developmental design standards. Click on these links and you'll have access to all the PDFs we have. Um, if you notice here in the top right corner is the link to our mobile website. Um, for you guys that have uh, smartphones, it makes, makes reading our design standards a, a lot easier on the phone. And there's the link. Can you go back to that link? I think some, some folks are wondering how to get it. Okay. There we go. It's at the uh, top right portion right here at the top. The actual link for the website. Oh. I'm gonna go all the way to the beginning. Right here. They're not gonna be able to see that. You want to read that out loud. It is www.dot.state.fl.us forward slash RD design slash forward slash design standards forward slash standards dot shtm we'll go back I'm also going over our design indexes that have changed here's our first one index 001, we've added these three uh, abbreviations. And we'll go on to uh, index two, 201, sheet two. If you look at the top left corner, a note was added to the leader note regarding the eye bolt and chain. You look at the N, the OR precaster QCP approved connector was added to the note. Also in index 201, we go to sheet 205. We added the uh, note highlighted here for the corner cut. 
Note read shop drawings of corner openings for approval by the engineer of record. It's added. Index 211, sheet 2. You'll see the highlighted details that have changed. There you go. And it is the vertical legs. We clarify the, the overlapping of the vertical legs here. Still an index to 11, sheet 3. These details were revised. And again, it's the overlapping. It was the uh, four and a half inch bin to bar 4E was added. Still in index 211, sheet 4, this table in detail were added. The uh, four and one half inch bin to bar E, and it was also included in the the bill of reinforcing steel table. Here's both of that detail. Here's the addition right here. And there's E. There's the addition to the bill. Still on uh, sheet four, we have the overlapping here. This detail has been revised to show the overlapping. And on to index 307, sheet 1. We actually deleted uh, note 10. Uh, the note did read when approved by the engineer in lieu of, of the payment and base, non-excavatable flowable fill may be used for a manhole stabilization and ring and cover adjustments. Excavatable flowable fill shall not be used within the limits of the pavement and base. That note was again removed from the index. And now we are going over index 400 and turning it over to uh, John Mautner. All right, thank you, Patrick. Um, while uh, while Patrick was giving his portion of the presentation, we had a question uh, that came up, uh, and it's: Are the design standards revisions to be included, even if they're not applicable to the project? The way it worked for the fiscal year 2012-2013 design standards was that if it was applicable to your project, you would note the date of the design standards revision. No sheets were included. The fiscal year design standards are valid from July 1st of 2012 through December 31st of 2012. Beginning January 1st of 2013 with the 2013 design standards, that process is changed. In order to implement and be consistent, we wanted to make sure that all of the design standards revisions that were released through design bulletin and valid at the time of letting are to be included in the plan set. So the answer to the question are design standards revisions to be included even if they're not applicable to the project, the answer is yes, and that's for consistency, and it's also for in case something comes up in the field, uh, the contractor will get the original 2013 design standards booklet from the website. If he does not have those design standards revisions and he's out in the field and he encounters something and it requires using the index that was modified or revised through the design standards revision, the contractor has to have access to that. The other thing that it does too, it takes away the burden of, and the pressure from the uh, project engineer who's designing the project to ensure that all of the design standards 
revisions are there so that he didn't overlook any that may be applicable to his project. So I hope that answers that question. And I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, get back to the uh, design standards changes that have taken place. And I'm going to go through and start with index 400. Uh, index 400, sheet 13. The, uh, there was some issue with notes and how to attach uh, and how to pay for the anchoring to existing and proposed bridges. When we released the fiscal year 2012-2013 design standards, we had made some uh, changes to the plans that we were we were convinced that would you know actually affect us. But we had since gone back and looked at several of the notes in Index 400, and as you can see, the the highlighted area, uh, part of the note from uh, fiscal year 2012-13 to 2013 was removed. On index 400, sheet 17, uh, we revised we revised note one to better clarify the criteria associated with implementing the pedestrian safety treatments. We also deleted cost information, which was note three, and then we changed pedestrian ways to sidewalks and changed bikeways to shared use paths. This, uh, these changes of changing the pedestrian ways and, and bike ways to shared use path, uh, that was to be able to be consistent with some verbiage that was uh, actually changed and due to a spec revision that was hosted by uh, Rich Hewitt. Uh, the background on that is the specification and supplemental specification revisions were hosted by Rich Hewitt, and this prompted us to uh, make some changes to standard index 400 as well as uh, 514. If you look at the notes, the notes now read, uh, note one, pipe rail is required on steel guardrail posts when the front of sidewalks or shared use paths are located four foot or less from behind the back of the post. This is the definition portion that changed. And there was some ambiguity as to actually what constituted uh, the actual distance and where was it. And what actually happened was uh, contractors were requesting the, excuse me, the CEI was requesting the contractors to put pipe rail in when maybe the tolerance that they measured it was 3 foot 10 or 3 foot 11. And they were making the contractor go back and install the pipe rail. The pipe rail should always be a part of the component plan set and should be shown in that plan set. And that kind of takes care of the issue as far as when it's supposed to be used. But as far as the definition for the, for the pipe rail, uh, that was clarified in note one. Uh, under note two, note two pretty much stayed the same. It was note three, which was renumbered to note two. And then uh, note three was re renumbered to note two. Uh, we revised the renumbered note for clarity, and we deleted dimensions based on proprietary products. So that's coming up next. This is a sample of uh, what the section detail looks like now, and it actually better clarifies what that four-foot distance is and where it's to be measured. So as you can see, it's measured from the back of the post to the front of the sidewalk uh, or the shared use path. Next sheet we're going to look at is sheet 18. We had some changes to the uh, to our notes section, and previously it said C note one. On this sheet, we wanted to to direct them to the actual details. So we told them to see the pedestrian safety treatments. On sheet eight, sheet 18. We revised the notes. Again, we revised the notes to from C note one to C pedestrian safety treatments on plan view detail. 
we deleted note one, and again we renamed uh, note one, note two to note one, and note three to note two. And the section information is what we're looking at here for section BB and section CC. There was some standard verbiage that was relative to uh, proprietary products that was included in this dimension, in this dimension for both of uh, section BB and CC, and those were revised to actually just put in the, the varied uh, minimum dimensions for the melt. And then again, it, uh, section CC tells you to see note one, and section BB tells you to see note two. Next sheet we're going to look at is uh, index 400, sheet 22. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the uh, detail of the post set in concrete. And down at the bottom, we revised the note before it was, it, we revised the class one note concrete label, and it now reads class NS uh, concrete on this section detail. And the class NS is non-structural concrete. On sheet 23, we uh, had to make some revisions again to the pedestrian ways, uh, and we revised that to sidewalks and changed bikeways to shared use paths. Uh, the verbiage came in this detail here, and if you look now, it says flared end section, rounded end section when located adjacent to sidewalks or shared use paths. So we pretty much looked everywhere where we had to change the verbiage to be consistent. Next sheet we're going to look at is sheet 26. Sheet 26, we deleted the last sentence from note one of the lateral placement on, on slopes. There was a uh, payment information that was included at the trail end here, and that was removed uh, for clarity, and the information has now been included in the specifications. So you'll also have to go back and look at the guardrail specification and that specification has been revised to include payment. Okay, we have a couple more questions here that just came in. I'm going to try to see if I can answer these. Uh, Question one is, why are the revisions made on a sheet not stated in the description box down at the bottom of the sheet? I'm not quite sure I understand that question. I'll go to question two. Can you clarify what exactly is to be included in the plan set? Is it just the revisions or all standard indexes? I can clarify that for the 2013 design standards uh, projects. You will only include the design standards revisions. Those that were revised, you'll receive a design bulletin. For example, the first one that was released was uh, design standards revision. It's R2013-01. So if you have a project that has that in there, you have to go back and add that verbiage in there and add the date and include the entire index of the revised in with your plan set. It's only the revised design standards that we're including. We can't include the entire booklet because the entire booklet is about a thousand sheets long. And besides, they have access to that on our website. I hope that answers question number two. Um, okay, is this for number one? Okay, I, I believe the answer to number one, let me go ahead and restate the question for number one. Looks like we've got a little clarity. Question number one is, why are the revisions made on a sheet not stated in the description box down at the bottom of the sheet? Uh, the design standards revision sheets do have notes that are within the revision boxes, uh, but not the book. So you will have to actually go and include that in there. There will be clouded in a, a red cloud in the PDF file, and you'll actually have the uh, the revision number. So if it's R20-01, 
13-01, you'll see that on the sheet that it actually applies to. And the contractor and the designer will be alerted to what actually changed in that design standard index. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and continue. The next thing that we're going to look at is uh, index 514. In index 514, I'm going to describe the need that occurred. Uh, the revision is based on the need to amend specification and design standards to best clarify the use of reclaimed asphalt pavement base and to correct verbiage usage for the terms sidewalk and shared use path. And this was the one that was hosted by Rich Hewitt and it affected index 400 as well as 514. Uh, it does not affect the utilities accommodation manual or the plans preparation manual or the basis of estimates. However, uh, a specification revision was hosted for Section 283, Section 330, and Section 334 of the standard specifications for road and bridge construction. In Section 283, uh, the word bike path was changed to shared use. Uh, the word bearing was added after non-traffic applications. And then in section 330-9.4.5.2, the word bicycle was deleted. And then in section 334-5.1.2, the word bike was deleted as well from the specification. Uh, you can go to our specifications website and they'll have all of that information available for you. Let's go ahead and look at the general notes. On the general notes, on new construction and reconstruction projects, when an entirely new base is to be built, the design engineer may specify the base group in any unrestricted general use optional base shown in that base group. Note, however, that some thick granular bases are limited to widening, which prevents their general use. Uh, there was no change to note two and then the change to note three now reads the designer may require the use of a single base option for instance type b 12.5 in a high water condition uh, this single base option will be bid and used as optional base the uh, the next set of notes pertain to the uh, base thickness and option codes chart in the chart, uh, we had to go back and make sure that everything was consistent with the revisions that we were making in the specifications. And uh, the two that changed was the asterisk and the box. Under the asterisk, uh, for granular subbase, the construction of both the subbase and type B 12.5 will be bid and used as optional base. Granular subbases include lime rock cemented coquina, shell rock, bank run shell, and graded aggregate base at a lime rock bearing ratio of 100. The base thickness shown is type B 12.5 and all sub -base, base thicknesses are 4 inch minimum. The changes to the little box note uh, now reads for restrictions on the use of wrap base C specification section 283. And if you go back to section, specification section 283, you'll find the verbiage that's changed and now uh, is more consistent with uh, how the wrap base is used. Next index that we're going to look at is index 515. Uh, for index 515, the need arose and the revision is based on multiple requests for information calls uh, which pertain to where and to what point radial returns must tie. Uh, over the last 18 months, several calls came in and we received in the Criterion Standards Office with a request uh, to better clarify uh, page 1 uh, of uh, Index 515. This is the detail we're looking at. 
and we added these points throughout the entire design and now you can see here on the right side those are return radius points or flare points. On sheet 2 through 4 and 7 we're going to look at some other modifications that were also tied to this and on sheet 2 we're going to look at the uh, the detail for the turnout with sidewalk and utility strip less than 10 feet and that's plan A. This is where we added the four foot minimum. Previously there was a, an allowance to go down to a three foot based on certain conditions and according to uh, Mary Ann Coos and Dean Perkins as well as uh, ADA requirements we cannot go below four foot, so the minimum four feet must be maintained on the sidewalk. And this detail clearly shows now that it's a four foot minimum with a 0.02 slope. On sheet three, we went back and looked at all of the details. And as you can see here, we're going to blow up just the one detail. And again, we changed everything to four foot minimum and removed the, uh, the reference to three foot. This, is, uh, this was done for the entire sheet in all of the uh, drive entrance curb, driveway sections on curb facilities that have sidewalk. So if you go back to sheet three of index 515, you're going to see some uh, changes to that sheet. Please go over all of them very closely because it's going to be important to make sure we maintain that four foot minimum width. Next thing we're going to look at is sheet four. And we're going to look at the plan detail of the modifications of adverse and marginal applications. And we also looked at, we're going to look at the G3 bullet, which also shows the revision to the four foot with the triangular note. If you look at this plan, everything's been modified. The four foot minimum is now in this detail. And you also have the driveway width uh, to note to see sheet one. And again here in the actual detail for G3 and all the other details, the four foot minimum was changed and the, uh, the delta mark was removed. Index 515, sheet five. There were uh, substantial changes made to this sheet. Uh, we're going to try to look at as many of these as we can, and I'll try to explain them as we go through them. In the, uh, the detail in the upper right-hand corner, the limits of clearing and grubbing, stabilizing, and base at intersections. Uh, the first thing that we did and that we looked at, previously there was no three-foot transition right here at this location. And what was happening is the driveways that had slopes that would drain to the department facilities or the side streets that would drain here, they would have uh, drainage erosion issues right here at the back of the curb. So what we did was we added the three-foot transition, which transitions from flat up to the, the, the curb, the type of curb. Again, we added the points in here so you can see where they actually go to and come from. The next thing that we uh, revised was the edge of travelway here and here. Previously, it was edge of pavement, and there's been some there's been miscommunication on what actually is the edge of pavement, whether it's the edge of the travelway or if it's the edge of the paved shoulder. Uh, for our intent and purposes, the edge of pavement is the edge of the travelway. Uh, this was clarified and, and defined. Uh, in, in this detail. Also, if you look down at the bottom, the, uh, the diamond for the 8 inches or match existing stabilization limits, 8 inch minimum, uh, that, was, that was revised as well. Actually, let me go back. I'm going to go back a little bit here. 
we had some details here that were that were revised and we had some the existing edge of travel way that's shown here and here and we also renamed this section to a drainage section and then we also modified the title here to read rural turnout construction index 515 sheet 7 Here we deleted the text of four foot standard, three foot minimum, and replaced that with the four foot minimum. We also changed the roadway pavement to uh, travelway. These are the details that we're looking at. It now reads four foot minimum, and you also show the travelway to the edge of the uh, travelway. Next thing that we're going to look at is index 516. In index 516, we uh, revise the edge of pavement to the edge of travelway for consistency. If you look at this detail, you can see now it reads edge of travelway and edge of travelway left and right. The next revision we're going to look at is index 700, sheet 2. Okay. On index 700, uh, the need arose to revise based on ADA of unobstructed sidewalk widths of 4 foot uh, minimum. Uh, this again was Marianne Coos reviewed the design standard index for compliance to the ADA requirements for unobstructed sidewalk widths of at least four foot minimum. Uh, to provide adequate resolve, uh, we hosted a revision to design standard index 515, which also prompted this revision to index 700. And if you go to the general notes, the general notes have been revised on sheet two. And it was note one that was revised and the words uh, shielding an object were added. So note one now reads, when shielding an object and sidewalks are present, an unobstructed sidewalk width of at least four feet must be provided. Note two did not change. Last one that I'm going to look at, this is an ITS index, index 18204. Sheet 1, uh, the index was deleted and it was replaced by index 17700, which is the pull, splice, and junction box index. For the roadway portion, that completes uh, what we're going to discuss today. Uh, we have one more question on index 515. Can we still use a three-foot minimum for sidewalk landing when conditions are restricted because of right-of-way? Um, I, I don't believe that's the case. I, I can't really answer that directly. I'm going to have to go back and do some more research on that question. And what we'll do is we're going to go back and, and restate all the questions and provide the answers to uh, the questions from the audience. Uh, I would have to defer that one to... Marianne Coos, who's not available with us right now. So as far as that question, index 515, can we still use a three-foot minimum for sidewalk landing uh, when conditions are restricted because of right-of-way? I'm going to defer that to Marianne, and we will provide an answer uh, on the website following the training. Okay, Rebecca Hatton, this, this is our design standards team, our contact information. Rebecca Hatton is our design standard specialist. She can be reached at 850-414-4824. You see her email listed below. Uh, Patrick Overton, his number is 850-414-4348. He's our new design standards engineer. And my contact information is 850-414-4334.
I'm the design standards manager and below is my email. At this point, I believe we've got, okay, we have another question that just came in. How do you submit revisions electronically? And I'm going to have to assume that they're talking about the design standards revisions. If that's the case, the design standards revision sheets are just going to be included behind the sheets of the plan set. When the project engineer runs EDI and runs PEDS, they are only going to sign and seal the project plan sheets. They're not going to sign and seal the design standards revisions. Those sheets are included for the contractor and the CEI to help better uh, expedite construction in the field. So as far as uh, how do you submit the revisions electronically, that process hasn't changed. That's the, the standard uh, EDI and PEDS process. You just do not sign and seal the indexes. You only sign and seal those sheets that apply to your project. Okay, at that point, I think we've answered all the questions that we can for today. And uh, I appreciate everybody attending, and thank you very much. And I look forward to our next Design Standards uh, booklet for 2014. And I'm going to turn this back over to Jackie.